Whoa, okay, you weren't kidding about this etch thing. I've got articles coming out in my ears, forum threads, even some uh, lively Twitter rants. People are fired up. Yeah, it's caught the WordPress world's attention, that's for sure. And you're right, tons of buzz, but this is, this is bigger than just a new tool launch, you know? Kevin Geary's swinging for the fences here. Right. He's making some pretty bold claims, saying it'll revolutionize WordPress development. I mean, guy's got a track record, right? Automatic CSS frames, It's he's not exactly a nobody. So people are sitting up and taking notice. But for our listeners who might be like, Etch, what's that? Let's break it down. What is this thing? So, simplest way to put it. Etch is aiming to be the, the ultimate development environment, specifically for pros, people building custom WordPress sites. Imagine all that back and forth uh -huh. between plugins, the WordPress admin area, all that gone. Etch wants to be your one-stop shop. So all that stuff that usually has developers reaching for the stressful custom post types, feels, building out those Gutenberg blocks, mm -hmm. Etch is saying, we gotcha. Exactly. And not just handle it, but make it, you know, elegant. One of the things that really makes it different is this whole class first approach. Now, I know that sounds jargony. A little bit. Yeah. But basically, think of it like this. Edge is built to play nicely with your own HTML, your own CSS. It's like Lego blocks, right? You got your basic pieces, your classes, and you can combine them in a million ways to create something totally unique. Okay, so it's about giving developers that flexibility, the control, which let's be honest, a lot of those drag and drop builders out there, they kind of fumble that. You yeah. end up with messy code, you hit a wall, it's limiting. Exactly. And that plays into another core idea behind Etch, high quality code. Geary and his team, they're hammering on this clean, semantic HTML, none of that bloated stuff that makes WordPress sites slow and clunky. They want professional grade output, even if you're using their visual tool. So that's a big deal for developers who want to build sites that you know actually perform well and aren't a nightmare to maintain down the line. But one thing I'm curious about is how Etch plays with the existing WordPress world, especially with Gutenberg being the default editor now. Are we talking complete overhaul or is Etch trying to play nice? That's where it gets really interesting. They're very clear. Etch isn't about replacing Gutenberg. It's about enhancing it. Like, think of it as a more powerful engine under the hood. You build an Etch, but it outputs clean, standard Gutenberg blocks. So from a client side, if you hand them a site built with Etch, they go to edit it. They're in the regular WordPress editor, none the wiser. That's pretty slick, actually. You get the power and flexibility for the developers, but without sacrificing that user friendliness that Gutenberg is going for. Exactly. Bridging that gap between professional development and what everyday users need, that's a tough thing to do. And that kind of leads us to the man behind the curtain, Kevin Geary. He's not exactly new to tackling these kind of challenges in the WordPress space. Yeah, he's built a career on seeing where developers are hitting a wall and coming up with, well, innovative solutions, to say the least. But with Etch, it's almost like he's not just building a tool. He's making a statement about where WordPress itself is going. Yeah, it's like he threw down the gauntlet, right? WordPress, we need to talk. And from the articles he sent, he's not mincing words about where he thinks things are going wrong. He's definitely not afraid of a little controversy. But got to remember, Geary's not some outsider with an axe to grind. He's been knee deep in the WordPress world for years. His tools, automatic CSS, frames, those are like staples for tons of developers. He's speaking from experience, not just like throwing bombs from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what makes his take on WordPress so interesting, right? He's not just complaining. He's pointing out specific things he thinks are holding it back, especially when it comes to, well, keeping those pro developers happy, engaged. And one of his big arguments is that WordPress is like losing its edge to other platforms, right? Hmm. Especially for those bigger, more complex sites that developers really want to sink their teeth into. 100%. He throws out some stats about market share, you know, how it's declining, especially for new websites. And there's this feeling that WordPress is becoming, well, the easy option, fine for simple sites. But if you want to do something really ambitious, you look elsewhere. And he kind of lays the blame for that at Gutenberg's feet, doesn't he? I mean, he's been pretty vocal about, you know, how it's been implemented, the impact it's had on the whole development experience. Oh, yeah. That's a whole other rabbit hole. But to put it simply, Gary saying Gutenberg... While it's made WordPress more beginner friendly, which isn't bad, it's kind of come at a cost. Less flexibility, less power for the pros. So it's kind of catering to the lowest common denominator and maybe pushing away the people who made WordPress what it is today. 
That's his argument, yeah. He feels like it's pushing those people away. Yeah. And that's where Etch comes in, right? It's like he, he's saying, all right, if WordPress won't give you guys the tools you need, I will. It's a bold move, that's for sure. Bold, definitely. By building something aimed squarely at pro developers, he's basically created a fork in the road for WordPress. And now everyone has to decide which way to go. Yep. Stick with the current path, hope WordPress catches up, or jump on the Etch train and see where it goes. That's a tough choice. <laughs> Especially since, let's be real, both options come with their own unknowns. Oh, absolutely. And that's what makes this whole conversation so fascinating. We're not talking about some new font plug-in here. This is about potentially a turning point for WordPress. All right, so we've got the vision, the drama, the whole future WordPress thing, a lot to unpack. But let's get real for a sec. For our listeners out there, the ones, you know, elbow deep in code, building the next big thing, what does etch actually mean for them? Where are the, the potential snags? Yeah, time to address the elephant in the room, the price. Geary's sticking with his pre-sale model, which, hey, it's worked before, but those numbers, people are definitely raising an eyebrow or two. 500 bucks on the low end, up to 1200 And that's before it's, you know, even close to finished. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's a that's a chunk of change, especially for something that's still, to put it delicately, in beta. And early adoption, well, it can be exciting, but sometimes you end up being the crash test dummy, right? Right. Now, in fairness to Geary, he's been very upfront about the timeline. Three years, that's the roadmap. Mm. Year one, they're saying basic marketing site builder, then year two, more complex stuff, e-commerce features, and then year three, boom, the full unified environment we've been talking about. Okay, so long game, he's not hiding that, but <laughs> there's there's another piece to this, right? This whole ecosystem he keeps mentioning. Marketplaces, integrations, third-party tools. I mean, that just screams extra costs to me. You're not wrong to be thinking that. It's a big question mark. And honestly, it's at the heart of a lot of the debate around Etch. Right now, we just don't know how much of what you need to actually use Etch will be locked behind those add-ons. Will it be this cool marketplace of specialized tools or will it be like, you know, nickel and diming you for stuff that should have been there from the start? So potentially a minefield for developers or agencies on a tight budget. And while we're talking downsides, got to bring up the fragmentation thing, a lot of the articles you sent, people were worried about Etch splitting the WordPress world in two. It's a classic double-edged sword, right? On one hand, Etch could be what lights a fire under WordPress, you know, pushes it to actually meet the needs of professional developers. Imagine if WordPress was known not just for being, you know, user-friendly, but also for handling those big, complex, crazy websites, no problem. That's the dream. Right. But here's the other edge. What if Etch actually pulls those experienced developers away from core WordPress? Instead of pushing for change from within, they all go, Etch is our home now, and you end up with two separate worlds. One for casual users, one for the pros, more compatibility headaches, more confusion, and honestly, less collaboration, less sharing of knowledge. So huge potential upside, but also, you know, the potential for things to go sideways. It feels like we're at a crossroads, and I'll be honest, it's a little dizzying even for, you know, WordPress veterans like us. So what does this all mean for our listeners, for their own WordPress journey? The million-dollar question, and I hate to say it, but there's no easy answer. It boils down to you. What do you need? What's your risk tolerance? What's your vision for what WordPress should be? If you're the type who loves being on the bleeding edge, if the idea of getting in early, giving feedback, shaping a new tool alongside a developer like Geary, if that gets you excited, then maybe that price is worth it. You're on the ground floor, you're a part of the process. But if you're more cautious, if your budget's not exactly overflowing, hey, waiting to see how it all shakes out. Perfectly valid, this is a marathon, not a sprint, and rushing into big decisions is rarely a recipe for success. 100%. Whatever you decide though, one thing's clear. Etch has shaken things up. It's got people talking, debating, really confronting some tough questions about where WordPress is going, what we want from it. And that in itself is a good thing, right? Absolutely. It's a reminder that WordPress, just like the web itself, it never sits still. And as users, developers, as part of this community, we've got a voice. We can shape what it becomes. So to everyone listening, as you continue your own WordPress journey, here's our takeaway. Don't just follow the hype. Follow your curiosity. Dig deeper. Ask those tough questions. And don't be afraid to be part of the conversation. Who knows? The future of WordPress might just depend on it.